Have you ever been romantically involved with a sociopath? ASPD diagnosed? If so, is it actually a traumatizing experience? What is it like? I had a friend who married one. He changed 100% the night they got married. He went from a nice normal guy to super cold. He moved her out of state, got her pregnant, and had two other families on the side. She finally got out of it. Fricked her up for a long time. A friend of mine dated a diagnosed sociopath, and she said it was frustrating because there wasn't any logic behind her attraction to him. She realized he was not good to her, but she couldn't stop going back to him. She described him as both the best and worst thing in her life when she was with him. Edit. I am not nor have I ever been in a romantic relationship with my brother I misread the POST. My twin brother. Things happened when we were little I wouldn't have linked up then but I most certainly do now. As twins. We obviously got two of everything. He destroyed his. Take mine and then say I destroyed mine to get his thing because it was better somehow. He hugged the family cat so hard it panted when he let go. Every time. Once he mysteriously found the cat with a broken leg. And decided not to tell my mom. He was just constantly trying to cause chaos. Pinning everyone in the house against each other. He would start arguments seemingly for the fun of it. And he'd always find a way to slip into the background while we screamed at each other. His worst offense was when he cut himself on the leg with a razor. And told my mom dad had made him do it. My parents nearly got divorced because of him. Then they did for other reasons. He told me a while later he lied about it all. He liked doing that freaking things up and only telling me i was branded as a liar for most of my childhood and no one really trusted anything i said because of him so he took all the more delight in confiding in me because he knew what it would do he lives with my dad now and i haven't spoken to him in four years but i have a fun story if people ask who the evil twin is i guess your edit made me laugh thanks he was a classic into animal torture and stuff like that the way he got to talk endlessly about animal torture was by pretending he felt bad for it and looking for sympathy. I can't believe I did. X. And. Y. I feel so bad. He kept mentioning it so much. He thought it was funny when me or the baby had pain. At one point he told me that it was so long ago. That by now I should also think it was funny that he had gotten my blood and pieces of my flesh on him. He said that me having empathy was proof that I was mentally ill. Because empathy doesn't exist. You just learn in your teens that there's consequences for being bad to other people. He also said that nobody cares about women. They're like steak in the supermarket and that when he saw a woman in the streets. He thought about raping them. He is incredibly charismatic and the police said that I made a false report. He is still harassing me through the legal system. It was traumatizing. I felt like I was losing my mind from the casual cruelty and gaslighting took forever for me to trust obvious truths again, since he was skilled at maliciously twisting them. Point zero three ten would not recommend. Been there. The trauma is brutal. I had intense therapy, and I'm still healing. Maybe I always will be. Who knows. But I do empathize deeply with you. Yes. He admitted his diagnosis proudly. At least to me. He was very troubled. I was only with him 8 months. But those 8 months were the worst of my life. He seemed happy to discover I didn't have stable housing. Asked if he'd like to move in. I said no. So he started causing problems with the people I was crashing with. I didn't realize this till later that he was the one that got me kicked out. Once I had no choice but to stay with him. Hotels or the streets. He laughed and said he's breaking his lease. Maybe if I did what he said faster, it'd be able to stay. But that I could sleep in his basement. He would do weird crap like that, making me wait outside of bars. His job, his friends' houses was a big thing he'd make me do, especially if the weather was poor. When he drank it was even worse. He'd sleep in the bathroom if he was on liquor to get away from him. If I didn't, he'd strangle me when he blacked out. He's wanted for killing a girl in another country now. No clue where he is but he'll randomly get contacted by him. It's been years but he still contacts me. All he says is I love you. Once he got into my email and changed my name to I love you. I know 100% it's him. I've seen and been through a lot of fricked up crap in my life. It is what it is. But that man takes the freaking cake for the most awful experience in my entire life. There are people I meet or see on TV that have the same exact look in their eyes or voice pattern as him. 
despite looking nothing like him. I avoid those people like the plague or grand to turn the TV off. It's like they over enunciate certain points of words yet have a monotone voice. The letter T especially. Like they're parroting a human. Not actually one. One thing he always did was watch YouTube videos and practice in the mirror on how to look happy. Sad. Concerned. It was insane. Everyone thought he was the greatest guy on earth. His mother tried to warn me that he'd kill me. Fricked up. Edit. Can people stop DM me begging for me to watch YouTube clips until I find one the reminds me of him? It's not something I can do. I'm done answering questions about this. It's getting to be gross. Also, the insults sending I love you. I know it isn't him because he doesn't send it in English. Nice try though. Edit. Please consult a professional if you believe you or an ex-loved one etc has ASPD. Diagnosing a serious mental illness yourself is not healthy and further pushes misinformation and stigmas. It seems a lot of people think narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder are the same thing as well. Yes, I dated a narcissistic sociopath. It was terrible, and left permanent scars. It took time but I realize now that everything was a lie. Well, his name was correct, but what he thought, felt, did, his plans and his history, I know none of those things. He is a complete stranger and I never knew him at all. I'm doing fine now, although once in a while I stop and shake my head because I feel so goddamn dumb. My ex is a walking illusion. He was whatever he needed to be at the moment to reel in his victim. Even after I filed for divorce, it wasn't until I heard the pathological lizard he'd told his new girlfriend that I realized it. There wasn't any diagnosis, but I was casually with a guy who was sending up some pretty serious red flags, and it suddenly clicked that he was a sociopath. No empathy. Would absolutely lie to people's faces. Huge plans that went nowhere. Nothing was ever his fault. Rules were for other people. When I drifted away from him or hung out with someone else, he would start putting lots of effort in again. And of course there was the cheating, lying, etc etc. Luckily for me, I had recognized it early, and I realized I needed to be careful about how I went about detaching myself from him. So here is what I did, and hopefully it can help someone. I never actually broke things off with him or told him we were done. Obviously this only works if you're casual, but maybe some variation could work. So an example would be that when he asked me for something, I knew he wanted it right then. So whenever he contacted me to ask for something I'd say sure, that sounds great. I get off of work in 3 hours and I'll come right over with whatever he wanted. After that he'd say no, never mind. I'd act like I was disappointed about it. So he thought he had successfully punished me. He thought I was still on the hook. I'd do this over and over until he stopped thinking of me as someone he could get things from. It took a while and a lot of acting upset when he would berate me or snap at me. I specifically remember sitting in his room while he yelled at me about where I put my purse down thinking okay remember V. This is very upsetting. I look sad. But it did work without him going to any extremes. And we lived in the same building. So it was hard to just avoid him altogether. Obviously your mileage may vary. I dated a guy who wanted total control 24 stroke 7. I got sick a lot and had a lot of medical tests because they couldn't figure out what was wrong. I got really boring and too sick to go anywhere so he broke it off. Yup, by far the hardest experience of my life was with him for nearly a year. Six years ago. Still working on recovery today. Tried to separate me from my friends and family. Made me feel responsible for him emotionally and financially. One of the first things he did after about a week of dating was convince me to pay for his $400 phone bill so he could have his phone switched back on and stay in contact with me. That was only the beginning. I lost all self worth. By the end I felt completely crazy. It's insane what prolonged exposure to gaslighting will do to a person. I ended up dropping out of uni because he would sabotage me at every turn. I'll never forget when I was working on a major project and he would keep walking past me calling me a freaking bee and spitting on my piece. I was the only one working and supporting two people on a crap hospitality wage is hard enough. Then add in about a $300 a week weed addiction. If he didn't have it, he would lose his crap, throw things, 
smash things etc. It was safer for me to keep him high, and in turn I smoked a crap load to escape the reality of the situation. I finally got out when I found that he had had prostitutes in the house, and in my bed. I finally opened up to my friends what had been happening and they got me out of there. It was fricked up, but I try to see it in a positive light. I've learnt and gained massive self esteem since this happened, and I find I can easily detect sociopathic and narcissistic personalities not people now. I still get super triggered by things, especially males yelling or showing aggression. I still get annoyed at myself for breaking down in these situations, but each time it happens I feel myself heal just that little bit. I see it as a wound reopening, but then the scar tissue builds up, making me stronger each time. Sorry for such a long rant. Seeing this question hit me and feels good to get a bit of the stuff off my chest. I don't imagine that it's common for sociopaths to get diagnosed as such. They tend to live in denial. They don't think they have issues worth exploring. Yes, I dated one, and it was the most traumatic experience of my life. By the time it was over, multiple years, I had no idea who he was. That's what it's like. I was a married to one. It was traumatizing. We had a child and he cheated while I was pregnant with a woman I specifically said I don't trust her. Please avoid being alone with her when she joined my group. Other friends basically invited her in. He was verbally and mentally abusive. He told me no one would want me because I was a young single mom so I may as well come home and just let him cheat with whoever he felt like cheating with. I moved across the country to escape his insanity. The best way I learned to deal with him is to ignore him and not give a crap. It messed with his ego big time. He really doesn't know how to deal with someone who actually gives zero shots about him. He would try to tell me about whatever was going on in his life and I'd say why are you telling me this? I don't care. Don't speak to me unless it's about our son. He kidnapped my child during a visit. Because our divorce was final in our home state, nothing could be done. It took me two years of fighting to win full sole custody of my son who is now grown and doesn't have much to do with his dad. There is of course a lot more to the story. Psychological warfare and such. He tried to make me think I was going crazy when I started to become suspicious. He tried to torture me for 18 years. I haven't spoken to him in 5 years and I feel free. He has been told if he so much as tries to speak to me at events for my son graduation, college graduation, military basic training graduation that I will walk away. I have nothing to say to the man and he has nothing to say to me. My son learned on his own what type of person his dad is and is remarkably well adjusted and full of empathy. Minus the kidnapping, I am dealing with the same exact scenario. I'm sorry you dealt with this, but I am happy your son saw his father's true colors and you have escaped them. Traumatic. I'm in therapy, but I'm scared of people now. I don't know if I want to get married or have kids. I beat myself up for it because there were so many signs he was a sociopath. But I still wanted him. Even after a few years we first broke up, I ended up catching herpes. He never cared about me and only cared about himself. He used me. I get really mad at myself when I think about it. Even typing this out my anxiety is slightly hitting me. I learned that I was in love with the idea of being in love and that my self esteem was so low. It's probably going to be a long time before I trust people again. One of my biggest fears is falling into that again. Even worse, not leaving. I'm thankful that I have family and friends so that helps me. I don't feel alone. I feel love all the time. Reading this was a stab in the heart. Gosh that sounds like absolute heck. Praying that you have a steady recovery. Don't beat yourself up so much over it. After several relationships with toxic people I learned, and quote often, that once you see someone through rose colored glasses all the red flags just look like flags. Was married to one for 4 years. Definitely would not repeat. The level of delusion is unreal, and trying to get him to understand someone else's pain, trying to get him to see how his actions were fricked up, was like trying to force a colorblind person to differentiate red and green. His vast lack of empathy was unyielding. Not even his therapist could make progress, and requested to meet with me for help in getting through to him. He truly lives in a fictional world where he can do no wrong, and it's freaking terrifying. I moved a thousand miles away first chance I got. 
My first boyfriend told me on our first date that he was a sociopath and I don't feel anything but I sure know I like you and because I was 16 and naive I completely fell for it. Q being manipulated into sex. Telling him I struggled with my relationship with food and body image only to be told I was flabby afterwards. And all the exhausting mind games. Even through all of that and more, I still utterly adored him and repressed all of my instinctual feelings that were telling me to leave, something I still feel dumb about. I honestly think I was just a toy for him to manipulate and hurt, something he made sure to tell me about after our relationship ended. The way his face would change from loving to like someone I didn't know was kind of terrifying really. It all fricked me up pretty badly and I still find it hard to trust people. Comma the way his face would change from loving to like someone I didn't know was kind of terrifying really. That's his mask slipping. Extremely. Still haven't recovered and I regularly have breakdowns over it. Thankfully I'm in a healthy relationship now, but feel it a shame the emotional pains and trust issues from my previous relationship can sometimes cause issues. Waiting to have therapy after lockdown. This happened about a year ago now. And I think it'll always stay with me. Honestly. His eyes were so soulless it was like glimpsing the gates of heck. Therapists will see you over zoom skype whatever. Okay I have never been romantic relationship with a sociopath. I am not here to share a story per se. I was reading through the comments and most of these characteristics of a sociopath mentioned in them I exhibit nearly all of them. When I was young. I felt to torture small insects. I don't feel empathy, and love to me doesn't isn't a feeling but a set of actions. But I haven't caused such problems as given in the comments, even though I feel kinda angry if my friend talks to anyone else, but I keep it with myself and nowadays I don't feel angry a lot. I have also made people fight each other when I was younger. I never find myself having any sort of emotions in social gatherings. Everyone else would be like it's so fun and I never felt that kind of emotion. But I don't feel like I would commit a crime, cause I live on principles and recently I feel like I have started developing genuine feeling and concern for others. These comments really made me see through myself and now I have a very serious problem. I am genuine worried if I would grow into a serious problematic individual. My friend really tries very hard to make me go to social gatherings and enjoy my life like others. I have told her a million times I display some of the common sociopathic symptoms and she just tends to take it as a joke and honestly most changes in me is due to her. But now I am concerned if I would harm her cause if I ever get angry on her my mind starts making plans. Not to hurt physically but to hurt her emotionally and stuff and I have been able to stop myself from executing that. I don't want to hurt her. So does anyone here know what I can do? All these comments are to be honest freaking me out. I have a bit of sanity left I guess and I don't wanna do anything crazy. Is there any sort of diagnosis for this so that I can get treated? I'd really suggest going to counseling. A counselor has seen similar patients and is able to give you the guidance and tools necessary to help get a handle on the situation. I also want to tell you that I dated a man who was a sociopath. And he is truly one of the kindest people I've met and treated me very very well. He saw a counselor frequently and I know that helped. Best of luck pal. Extremely traumatizing. It's like waking up one day and realizing you have no idea who you have been intimate with and sleeping next to for that last 7 years. That they never loved you. They just loved having control over your life. They knew exactly what to say or do to keep you loving them. To top it all off, everyone loves him. He has tons of friends, and they all think he is the greatest thing on earth. His charm is sickening now that I know who he truly is, but it is his charm that kept me trapped for so long. That somehow, slowly over those 7 years, you blocked everyone out of your life because he was all I needed, and now you have nobody, and no friends, nothing. He somehow became your entire existence. The worst part of it for me was when you do realize the crap hole your life has become and try to talk to him about how depressed and alone you are. He has absolutely no feelings or sympathy for you. Zero. Sympathy is something I never seen from him those 7 years now that I think about it. Me being 8 months pregnant and him not going to a single doctor's appointment. Or asking me if I was okay is what made me wake up. When that entire 8 months he didn't even ask me what we should name her, is what really did it for me. To keep in mind, he was the one who was constantly begging to have a child. My pregnancy was due to a failure in my IUD. 
So although unplanned, I am happy. Slowly, I knew I had no idea who this man was. Don't even get me started on the cheating. Only a monster could cheat on someone they love while they are pregnant and alone. And scared. And insecure. I could go on. And I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I am currently in the process of being two weeks away from giving birth. I am high risk. And have to sneak out and move out of my own apartment so I can go to a new one where we won't come find me. Moving when you are that big and close to your due date is a different type of heck. Sociopaths don't care about or love anyone except them. Edit. My mother was right. Of course. LOL. I wasn't able to change him. Love sometimes really isn't enough. She told me this the entire relationship because she knew how he was. But love is love. And sometimes it sucks. Not really romantically, but I had a crush on him for a while before we became best friends. I used to tell him I loved him, and he would stare at me blankly and reply with, Oh, he never cried. I watched him get hit with a baseball bat and the balls and he just sat there and held them. His dog died. He didn't cry. I wrote him a song to show him how much I loved him, and he didn't care. Messed me up big time and now I have difficulties telling my uh, complicated boy relationship partner dude that I love him. My sister is a sociopath. She only dates people with mental disorders minorities so she can constantly guilt them into stuff. Every relationship she's been in, she's yelled at them you're only dating me because I am white. I'm married to one for over 10 years who would describe himself as such. He is on the high functioning end of the autism spectrum. And he describes himself as being a lot like a computer. Very logic driven. High creativity in problem solving. Suitable as an engineer, but doesn't get too emotional about stuff. Not that he can't feel emotions. And he has at times felt uncontrollably angry on something but I can count on one hand in the 15 years we have been together. But he is very aware since a young age he doesn't have the same emotional response to things as almost everyone around him. And he knows he doesn't have much empathy to people. He finds Sherlock Holmes as played by our DJ as very relatable. Especially the scene where he is getting overstimulated by his environment and just not really caring about things others get angsty over. He has cultivated as a result over the years, in his words, a more human seeming social facade he shows to others. But that said he has a strong connection to me, our kids, and his mother, and in times of crisis or a family emergency, father dying, my parents pet getting severely injured, it's like he turns off all emotion, gets to problem solving, and his cool head helps us get through. It's actually been comforting that he can do it if I'm emotionally falling apart. So yeah, I guess my husband and I are the anomaly here. In the literal sense of social path of a lack of conscience, yes. Chronic liar and me being young I didn't know any better. I ended up getting her pregnant and I knew it was for the best that she not raise her own daughter. So in our divorce I made sure to get custody. Everything turned out well. For my daughter. I on the other hand found out a number of years later my daughter wasn't biologically related to me. Many men that could be considered a nightmare scenario and for me it was for a while and I still have trouble with it honestly. But I am glad my daughter didn't have to grow up with her mother and only has to interact with her when she, my daughter, wants. I was married for a few years to a sociopath. She has me twisted around her little finger. She love bombed me. Seems like my perfect partner. Would say everything I wanted to hear. Whilst steadily manipulating me to get whatever she wanted. I ended up working my butt off while she studied. When she was actually juggling other guys and doing coke. I found out. She tried to convince me it was all my fault and I should apologize and stop being so controlling. Let her live her dreams and support her financially. I fortunately had the emotional fortitude despite being devastated to say no. No more. So she took me for a small fortune and the divorce and stuffed much of my hard earned money up her nose. So many people told me they wanted to warn me. Told me how something always seemed off about her. 10 years later she still writes to me. About how much she misses me and how she's forgiven me for the way I treated her and we should talk. Yet, yeah, I still have copies of all the messages and photos to other guys. Of the messages to her only friend saying what a thrill it was and how easy I was to manipulate. It took me years of therapy and self-flagellation to get over the guilt I felt at letting this be done to me. How foolish I had been to give my trust to someone so cruel. I've come to accept though that the fault was not with me. I did my best. 
and I wanted to believe in her and build something. She's the one who lied and tore everything apart. Those years are now a fading scar. For a long time it was a festering wound, but now it's part of me which led to better things. I emigrated, and now live an infinitely better life with someone who deserves and earns my trust every day, who I respect and love, and who reciprocates. That thing I knew is still in the same place, still ripping her own and her chosen victims lives apart. I don't take any joy from this, but it doesn't make me feel like scrubbing every inch of my skin clean any longer. I was married to one. He's an officer in the army. He constantly talked about how much the army loves sociopaths and how great they are. Every other person was out to get him and he claimed it was that he had a strong personality. It was a very classic start. He loved me. Thought I was great and was worthy of him. Fights were really dramatic. I was young enough to be enthralled with the man in uniform idea. My therapist finally convinced me I have PSTD responses from being in a relationship with him. Mostly because he would deny things that happened. Being a sociopath he's very convincing. He would get blackout drunk and have complete meltdowns. Punching holes in the walls or throwing bottles at me. Being far away from my family and support I had a hard time vocalizing what was going on. If anyone called him out on it he would start talking about his old deployments and how awful it was. As a deflection method. I let him use that as an excuse for a long time. I now realize this is a common method of someone with a borderline personality. I would be the bad one for not putting up with him because he had wrapped himself in the flag. Even to this day when I have to deal with him he claims none of it ever happened. I sometimes call friends who were there to make sure my memories are real. I also have the worst body image. I'm a competitive athlete, even in my 30s. And if I went to the gym I was being vain and if I didn't I was unattractive. There's still tons of guilt over leaving because a lot of close people don't understand. Sociopaths are great at wearing masks. Hopefully I'll find someone great one day. I just don't think I'll ever be able to believe anything they like about me because I'm used to waiting for anything good to be used against me. Just wanted to comment and mention that not all of us ASPD are like this. Some of us actually identify there is an issue and want to blend with society. Currently dating one. Not traumatizing at all actually. He was diagnosed when he was younger and it's just something to live with. He's charming and carries himself very well among others. He doesn't feel empathy like the rest of us do but can understand why something would provoke the reaction it does even if he can't feel it the same way. The mask he wears is super convincing and you wouldn't know he was one unless you really got to know him. The relationship is great but it is a bit weird in a way. I learned that my love and his love are different. And this applies to all other emotions such as sadness, anger, and jealousy. For the most part our relationship is great. It has its normal ups and downs. I try to take the time to understand him but it can be a bit difficult. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.